Hey YouTube, all right. Figured I was gonna do a little video today. Honestly, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. So let me put in my disclaimer up front right now. I'm not a professional, I'm not a gunsmith. In fact, I could hardly find any information on what I wanna do, so that's why I decided to make a video. Now, you have to do that at your own risk. I'll show you what we're doing today, and you guys can uh, do some of your own homework before you attempt it. So. I own a Daniel Defense with a 14 and a half pinned and welded lower. If you see right here, see how Daniel Defense insets the pin and they weld it. That's to make sure that this muzzle device stays legal. So the whole barrel has to be 16 inches in order for it to be legal, at least in the state where I live. You guys check your own laws. Um, However, I am lucky enough to have a registered SBR, so I'm gonna whack this sucker off and I'm going to install a dead air flash hider. Reason I'm doing this is I was lucky enough to get my Sandman S out of jail. So I'm gonna to try to install that and we'll see how this goes. I've never attempted this. I have no idea how this is gonna work. I don't know if it's going to be good, I don't know if it's going to be bad, I don't know if I'm going to catch anything on fire, hence the fire extinguisher, but I'm going to give it a shot and you guys will get to see with me live, a uh, regular guy in his garage trying to figure this out. I did some YouTube videos, there are a few things out there that show uh, how to cut these off, not very much, so I will attempt it with this and I hope you guys like the video, so stand by while I get everything ready. I'm going to get my die grinders out and everything like that, and uh, we'll give it a shot. Thanks a lot. Hang on. Okay, guys. Here we go. I'm using a pneumatic die grinder. You can use whatever you want. The key is to weld or to grind off just the weld without damaging the threads and then agitate the pin so that the pin pops out. Again, this is on a 14 and a half inch uh, Daniel Defense M4A1, and uh, I've never attempted this before, so... You know, bear with me. I may stop a few times, but this is live. It's a little bit hot. Well, I have no idea where I'm at. If I'm even deep enough. So bear with me guys. I'm gonna pause it for a minute. I'm gonna go get my armor's tool, see if I can wiggle this, maybe pop that pin a little bit. And uh, I won't do anything without showing you guys. I might wiggle it a little bit, but um, I'll try to show you on camera. I just don't want the video to be super, super long. Okay. I ran and got my armor's, armor's tool. All I'm trying to do is wiggle it here. See if I can see anything. Okay, safety goggles on, I guess we'll go a little bit deeper. Okay, I let my air compressor turn off. Now what I'm gonna do is, I just wanna take it slow. I'm really trying hard not to damage this and give you guys a good video. So there's like a little lip right here. Um, there's like a channel right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna kind of take this lip down a little bit and see if I can just open that area up a little bit more. Alright, I'm about as deep as I want to go. I'm starting to get nervous. I can kind of see the outlines of that pin. 
I got a super heavy duty magnet. Whew, that is hot. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Did you guys see that? It cracked just a little bit. I watched it move. So now hang on, let's try to get this magnet out again, maybe. I saw it move, I definitely saw it move. Just wiggling it just ever so slightly back and forth. Ow, shit. These rare earth magnets are friggin' extremely strong. <laughs> I can clearly see all the way around that pin. So now the question is, how in the world? Do I get that freaking thing to come off? When in doubt, right? Hit things. <laughs> What I don't want to do is damage my threads by spinning it too much. I can actually see that pin moving. Why is it not coming out? Okay guys, bear with me. I'm going to put it on hold. I'm going to go get a little, little tool. Okay, I went and got some punches. And what I'm gonna try to do is get one of these really small punches. I don't know if this is gonna work. I really don't, but I'm just gonna see if I can just wiggle that pin. Man, I don't know if you guys can see, it really does look like that pin should just pop out at me. It's moving around. Let's just still, Attached somehow by the wells. Grind it down just a tiny bit more. It's like, I'm not real comfortable going any further than that. Okay, I'll go get like a drill maybe. All right, I took a little quick break and went and got online. So everything online says to really just work that pin back and forth. I'm gonna do my best here. Let's see if I can get it. Can you guys see that? All right, well, I was really trying to avoid it, but we'll see if we can drill it. All right, I went and got some cutting oil. Just regular old tool oil. I'm gonna put a drop or two in there. Two drops. I wanna see what that does. I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit more, see if I can work that oil down inside those cracks. What I'm struggling with is telling, I can definitely see the pin, but what I'm and it looks like it's cracked all the way around. I 
what I did is I also got a really small, small drill bit. I choked up on the drill bit. We're gonna see if we can. Just agitate that just a little bit more. Ooh, that is some, that is super hard steel. Should have known. I'm hoping what this will do is maybe move that pin around, you know? I'm focusing really hard not to slip off that pin. Going really slow. Did even put a dent in it? Barely. Holy mackerel. So what I was hoping to do is that that pressure on that pin would help slip it, make it slip. It looks like it's starting to move out. Might actually be walking that pin out with the hit of the hammer. I am. Yep. Surely you can use this as a hammer, right? <laughs> Oops, sorry about that, guys. Okay, that pin is coming up. I'm going to try the drill a little bit more so that I didn't go real, real deep on that pin. Oh, broke the drill bit. Okay, that's the problem with small drill bits. I knew better, I went too hard, I felt that. All right, always use snap-on tools as punches. Everything I own is going to be magnetic after this friggin' project. Put another drop of oil in there, and I'm going to go get another uh, drill bit. I'll try that again. Drill bit seemed to really move it pretty good. Let that oil soak down in there. All right, hang on, guys. Okay, well, I don't have another small drill bit in that size. I broke my last one, so. Good advice. When you break something, replace it in case you ever need it again. We'll just... Uh-oh. I moved that a lot. Oh, I hope I didn't just strip my threads. I put a little more pressure on that than I had in the past. Oh! There it is! Look at that. Pin! Okay. Moment of truth. Oh, it feels a little bit, feels like I might have nicked those threads. Look at that. I am super happy with that. Holy mackerel. That works. Okay, I'm going to take off the camera. Hang on. Sorry for all my hands and everything in the way. Okay, I'm pretty happy about this. Let's Check this turn out. the camera around here so you can see a little bit better. Let me get it to focus here. Look at that. Now, it looks like I had quite a bit more room to go. See how much more deep I could have went? I mean, you don't know that at the time. So I'm comfortable with, with where I stopped at. Ah, 
Sorry for all the moving around. There's the pin. Okay, let me get this uh, camera all set back up on the phone here, or on my stand, so give me a second. Oh, I'll tell you guys about this too, I almost forgot about that. Hang, I'll tell you that at the end, okay? Hang on. Okay, I'm back. I did a couple things off camera to help speed up the process. This is where I'm gonna show you guys some probably use, useless information, but um, I figured what the heck, I might as well show you. So, um, here is our new dead air Sandman flash hider that we're gonna put on. Um, the flash hiders come with a pre-done uh, spot for a pin and welded. Now remember, I'm putting this on an SBR, so I will not be pinning and welding this. Um, I will simply just be putting it on. And you know what? I am going to put a dab of Loctite on today, which I know Loctite doesn't do anything hardly. You know, if you want to put anything on, you use rock set. I always put a teeny bit of Loctite on there. I think it does a little bit better than nothing. I know that when it gets super hot, it does fail. But that's besides the point. That's just something I like to do. So, here's some information for you. With the dead air comes a shim kit to install. Now, the directions say uh, do not use a crush washer as it may affect alignment issue or it may cause alignment issues. Do not cross thread, of course. It says use approximately between 25 and 35 foot pounds of torque. I like to go right in the middle, so I'll do mine at 30. Um, it says don't use pliers, and if you do decide to use rock set, it could be very difficult to get off. So here you go. This is where it says, uh oh, can you not see the torque specs? I'm hoping you guys can see that. Maybe you can't. But anyway, it's 25 to 35 foot pounds. The shim kit, there's a shim kit that comes with it. I am using in the shim kit, the one big shim, and then one, two, three of the mediums, and one of the ultra thin for a total of 0 0.077 inches. Well, hang on. Yeah, 0 0.077 inches, okay? I'm gonna test, test it on here real quick. I did a mess around with those shims off camera. It took me about 15 minutes to figure out which one, how I wanted it on there. So the pinhole is right here, and I'm trying to go for right here on the 90 degree spot just like um, it had it so at the six o'clock position of the barrel, which is the bottom of the barrel I'm hoping that with enough torque here that that will work just fine This did not have any Loctite on it, but remember it was pinned and welded I really don't know what other companies do or use. I'm not sure I'm gonna go with my trusty one very small drop of red Loctite It's a uh, peace of mind for me. I'm sure there'll be a million people out there that say one way or the other and you know what I'm actually gonna put on a touch more than that. I, I said one drop guys I'm actually gonna do two drops. Okay. I'm gonna thread this back on. Now, I'm gonna give you guys some advice. This could be wrong advice. I heard this from another person, and shame on me, I never verified it. Maybe somebody out there in YouTube land can tell me about it. But, when using one of these to torque down, I was told that you want your torque wrench, so once you ins install this, hang on. Okay, once you install this, you want your torque wrench to be 90 degrees.
Okay, I had to go a hair past what I wanted to do. It's probably closer to that 35 foot pound torque mark, but it looks like I got it pretty, pretty close to center there. Let me look. I'm pretty happy with that. I think go maybe just a, uh, just a smidge more here. Right, smidge is a uh, relative term. Okay, all right, I like that. I, I think that looks pretty good. All right, okay, a little bit of other information. Okay, here is the one that we cut off, okay? Can you guys see that? So if I put my calipers down inside the hole, from the top, to the bottom of the drilled hole, is, okay, and I do not want to screw this up. Bear with me, okay. So what I've done is I've sat it right there on my groove, right where I was cutting, okay? Now, when I extend my calipers down to the bottom of the pinhole, right where it starts to hit the threads. Now, can you guys see inside there? See how that sticks down? Okay, so I'm stopping it right to where it hits the bottom of the thread and probably just a teeny bit higher than that. The readout, is this 0 0.115 okay I don't know if this is gonna help anybody the pin the remaining part of my pin zero point one three five five okay for you math whiz out there Maybe that'll help somebody, maybe that won't. I really don't know, I hope it does. Like I said, guys, I'm not a professional, I'm just doing my best to try and help you guys out. Okay, so, let me reposition this, okay. Let's see, go over here. I told you at the end of the thing I would show you my, little, my new little toy, so. Let me loosen this up. This is the Magpul Bev Block. What the heck does it stand for? Barrel Extension Vice Block Tool for the AR-15. Now, I'm not doing a review on this. I just got it myself, but I will tell you a couple things about it. One, it uses pins to mount to your upper receiver. It uses the back of a bolt carrier group to help lock it in, so hang on, let me do this, put this on, it's made out of polymer and it's got a metal spline down the middle, okay, here we go, so, like I said, not doing a review, just going to show you guys how this worked. These lugs right here, see that? They interface with the inside of your AR-15. Right, oh, the light's really bad, sorry. Right there, right where your ammo goes. So you put this on, it goes in there, and then to help with stability, this goes through the back, and it lines up, and it actually, sticks on right there and that helps hold this whole thing nice and rigid make it really easy to work on and then you can do hands free you can flip this block upside down work on a lower goes like that insert this there you go
And that's what I use today. Oh, and then what you would do is you put your your pin in to hold everything nice and steady and still wobbles a little bit. That's because I got a workbench. And honestly, I'm not even using my regular workbench. We used my workbench at a trade show for work, so I just put a piece of plywood on two table ho or saw horses. Not a good idea when you're working on gun. Not what I'm used to. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I will go grab my suppressor, thread it on so you can see the last little bit. Okay. I had to go dig this sucker out of the gun safe. Finally got it. it. Took me about 25 minutes to find it. For a minute I was panicking. Thought I lost it, but I didn't. It was just buried in there amongst a bunch of my other suppressors. So don't lose NFA items. Bad, 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 bad. Okay, so here she is all on. Dead Air Sandman S. Our final project. It's got a little indexing point right here. I don't know if you can see that. See the little notch? That tells you the top dead center. Push her on, crank her down until she nice and locks up. Nice and hard. She looks like. This is on a 5.56. Five, I could also put it on my 300 Blackout or my 6.5 Creedmoor. And take it off. looks harder than it is. This is the only thing that is a little bit hard, but that's because it's still brand new and I'm still wearing down that metal a little bit. But anyway, find my indexing point. Can only go on one way. Screw her down. Boom. She's ready to go out and play with. So hope you guys like the video. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you gotta do. Uh, make your comments. I'll do my best to try and answer them. Um, just for everyone out there, if you are attempting to do this, pit, take off a pinned and welded birdcage, it can be done. I absolutely was terrified about doing it. Take your time, pay attention to what you're doing. You know, I guess my number one advice for you to be is as I was getting down, you could start seeing that pin, just the outline of that pin. As soon as you see that, I'd stop, I'd wiggle it a little bit, see if I could break it loose. I think that putting cutting oil inside there really helped at the end. By putting the cutting oil in, I took that drill bit and I started to drill down into that once I got down far enough and I could actually see it dislodge. And then tapping on the side of it absolutely started to wiggle it or, or loosen it up. And then again, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You could watch it. It's really hard to see. I pr you probably couldn't see it on the camera. I'm not sure if you could, but you'll barely see that the edges of that pin start to show themselves, show themselves. And then soon it'll just do a little tiny, and you, you'll you'll actually think yeah it's really hard to hear that or actually even see it. Um, I I had to stop and look, but um, and then I used the magnet to suck it right on out. I have a very very powerful rare earth magnet. They're great. Um, any magnet would probably do at at the point once it's broken loose. So anyway, guys, again uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you were like me, go ahead and give it a try. It wasn't too hard. Thanks a lot.